just some of the possible winners for this year's GameSpot 2014 Game of the Year. As I said, all games that are released this year are eligible. We had a lengthy discussion talking about who our platform winners were, who our Game of the Month winners were, um, a free-for-all. I'm looking forward to seeing who comes out the winner. Mm. We won't be announcing the winner for a week and a half, but right off the bat, some fantastic games that came out this year. Let's go back uh, to uh, earlier in the year, Bayonetta 2, a game that got 10 out of 10 on GameSpot, the first oh. 10 out of 10 in a number of years, and the highest reviewed or highest scored game on GameSpot.com this year. Uh, Kevin, what is it about Bayonetta 2 do you think makes it uh, eligible for a possible game of the year? The game is so good! <laughs> is, what's, is what makes it eligible. It's just, I would say that me from a mechanical perspective, it is probably the most mechanically perfect action game to ever be made. You said the P word? I did. I, I do think <laughs> said the there's, P word. except for the fact that I wish it was a little harder the first time through yeah. on normal difficulty, that's the only real gameplay problem I had with it. I just think this game is exquisite in every way, mm. and playing it means having a giant grin on your face mm. from beginning end. I finished it in a, in a, in a night, I, I, it was just a seven hour stretch where I started and finished it, and I never stopped laughing and smiling. I just loved this game. Uh, let's keep it on the Wii U. Let's talk about a game that a lot of people have enjoyed this year. Um, maybe not so fervently, but it has a sort of a mass appeal to it. Mario Kart 8. Uh, it's a game that I've been playing a lot uh, in my bed this week since uh, I got a Wii U last week and have you know, realized the wonders of just sitting in your bed with the gamepad and then realizing it's 3 in the morning. I was going to say, <laughs> people do get pretty passionate about Mario Kart 8, but then you brought up this whole bed thing, and <laughs> I don't know, it, it probably still holds true. I mean, you, you know, you're like, again, you, know, you hear Kevin talk about Bayonetta and having a smile on your face. Mm. I feel like... If you don't have a smile on your face in Mario Kart, you are just enraged because someone has just like shelled you or done something, and like beneath that rage is a smile because the games are. <laughs> this game is so fun. The track design is so good, and uh, it's just it feels so good to play. It's one of these games that just feels great. Uh, I want to give yeah. a shout out to another game which a bunch of people in the office are determined that it is at least their favorite game of 2014. Whether or not it is GameSpot's, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, the Dark Below, it's just come out. Half the office is back <laughs> playing Destiny. Destiny. Uh, uh, you want to talk about contentious conversations yeah. that we have during the discussion. I mean, look at Van Orr <laughs> shaking his head right here. No. And then we have people going to bat because they are have played it literally like every week, almost every day <laughs> since it came out and just are so into the grind, into the PvP, into the PvE, into the raid, into the gear, into like their alt characters, into this world. And, you know, there are some legit shots you can take at Destiny, for sure, mm. but uh, that, that hasn't stopped it from remaining such a highlight of the year for so many. A fantastic game, uh, divisive, and I think it'll be very interesting to see where that comes up. I see Kevin just giggling to himself here. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Close up of Kevin shaking his head. Muttering <laughs> 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 uh, 6.0 under his breath. Uh, let's talk about a game actually that maybe you weren't too hot on as well that uh, some other folks oh. were, which was uh, Far Cry 4, another uh, game which could possibly win this year's game. Yeah, but game the thing is, I totally get it. Like, I mean, even with Destiny, I totally get it. That's the thing. I might shake my head, but I do get it. Mm. And with Far Cry, I get it as well. It's just such a great... That Ubisoft formula that they've really honed for the yeah. open world. I mean, it's easy to roll our eyes, and I do often, about the Ubisoft formula. But when it comes down to it, it works because it keeps you chasing one activity over the other. And in the times in between the things that you chase is actually where the adventure happens, yeah. if that makes sense. And so you might be chasing a little dot on a map, but actually what you're doing is you're just, you're just mapping a route from here to there, knowing that the cool stuff is what happens in between. Uh, I want to have a quick little thought as well about some games that haven't been mentioned in our nominees list, but uh, are still eligible. Two of the other Ubisoft games that came out this year that used that system. Kevin, would you like to speak oh, to Assassin's Creed Unity and Watch Dogs? Do you think I they think could possibly be Game of the Year winners this year? I mean, you, you never know. Um, you know, I, I actually really liked Watch Dogs. Mm. Um, you know, it's, 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 Alexis doesn't <laughs> oh, like this so much. Talk about devices. Uh, but I actually liked Watch Dogs in part because e even though its story wasn't that great, some of its themes really spoke to me. Mm. Themes of, of people Hacking people's... Around. No, it was more about the idea of people so invested in this life. Right. Looking at their phone that they forgot to be invested in this life. That's the part that really spoke to me. And I actually think that's a theme. <laughs> the, what are you doing? That's cool. What? Cool story, Kev. Oh, look! 
Yeah. Why are we giving the winner to Crossy Road? What's going on? Crossy Road. Can we talk about no, Crossy Road? No, we can't road? talk about Crossy Damn. Road. No. Yes, we no. can talk about it's Crossy so Road. It's so good. We've got a mobile category. It's, it's a mobile so game. Good. That's Maybe. true. Crossy Road is technically eligible. You can play as a pigeon that poops as it walks. So wait, this is just Flappy Bird, only you're a road? Or you can play what? as a pigeon that can poop in GTA Five as well. You can. Uh, the reissue. All you need to do is take drugs. Or you can play Digital as, a, drugs. as a human that poops while they walk. No, I don't think you no? can do that. Okay. Uh, a GTA. game. Uh, a game. That's real life. In the That's world, life. Uh, lots of great open world games did come out this year, of course. Um, one of the ones that I think took a lot of people uh, by surprise a couple of months ago was Middle Earth: uh, Shadow of Mordor. Alexa, you've been playing yes. a lot of this game. I've played the heck out of that game. It's just so big and like you don't have to like I spent maybe the first six or seven hours of my playthrough not playing any story missions I just wanted to go after those Uruks and I yeah, just wanted to take them down and the game does a really good job of making you care about all of that side stuff because that side stuff just makes you more powerful you can unlock runes for your sword make your sword more powerful it'll make you more powerful and then you're you know uber powerful and then you can go take on these war chiefs it's let's just, keep it real the reason great. you actually went around and did all that stuff is because you were tired of orcs mouthing off to you and you just wanted to kill them all perhaps i don't know but <laughs> we can talk about that for a second too like mm. i think that these enemies are all very smartly written too some of the dialogue's really funny yeah all these the, orcs are different personalities and having somebody uh you know an orc that you thought you had killed uh, a couple of hours earlier come up with a big metal plate mm. um, on his head screaming at you Calling out exactly what happened is uh, something that was a really good time. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you know I think the thing about Mordor is that you sort of forget when you're playing it just how more interesting it is than most third-person action games. Mm -hmm. The things that it nails, it, it gets combat, it gets exploration. The side quests are interesting. The Nemesis system, of course, is fantastic. But there haven't been that many third-person action games that have really been that interesting. Mm -hmm. One game, for instance, that we haven't seen come up in our nominees yet, which is also still eligible, of course, is Infamous Second Son. Oh, uh, that's a game oh, when, you, when you that. exactly when you put that up against Mordor, you sort of you, it, you realize, wow, Mordor actually does quite a lot very well. Um, yes. And another game that does in a sort of traditional um, uh, genre, as it were, is um, Dragon Age Inquisition. Yeah. yeah, you want to talk about like enemies having personality in Mordor and then giving the world personality. Dragon Age Inquisition is, you know, as a Bioware game, it's the personalities of your party members that really, I think, draws me into this. And the sheer, like, this is a game where every, every mission for me is like almost like a Sophie's Choice of like, I can't, you're really cool. I want to take you, you're really cool. I want to hear what you have to say to this person, so I want to take you as a pair, but I only can bring three people at a time. Like, but just... I spend, you know, as much time out exploring the world as wandering around Haven, striking up conversations with these people because mm. their personality is such an interesting part of the game and is such a rewarding aspect to explore. As yeah. Speaking of difficult decisions, another fantastic role-playing game that came out uh, on PC, but from a different perspective, Divinity Original Sin. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're a big fan of this one, Kevin. Yeah, I am. And, and, and again, I think that uh, we can talk about Bioware games in which the decisions sort of come down to to story branches or a game like Divinity where the decisions come down to just, it's, it's very procedural mm. in this case. And so what you do, um, it's not just a matter of do I, do I try to talk or do I try to fight? You try to talk, what kind of talking are you going to do? Um, I mean, it, it really comes down to stuff like that. And if you, and if you decide to fight, you might miss out on, on completely new quests because, because of that alone. You know, there, there's things like, hey, you can talk to animals, but you may not know that if you don't have the right, the right skill for it. So there's all sorts of stuff that you may never see simply because you make choices, and sometimes you don't even know that it's really a choice. A uh, fantastic game that um, is only available on the PC. I want to talk a little bit about some of the exclusives that came out. Uh, first of all, on the Xbox One, you could have games like Titanfall, which we've talked about, but Sunset Overdrive was a pretty interesting game when it came out a couple of months ago as well. Mm -hmm. I know folks who were playing it, you know, initial mm -hmm. feedback from our reviewers was not great. It was like, this game seems like it's not that fun to explore. But once you got past that two-hour hump, that game gets pretty fantastic. Yeah, nothing else looks like it, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're flipping around, everything is so colorful and like that sort of aesthetic of like it's the end of the world but everything's crazy I think works really well yeah. for that style of gameplay. And you yeah. talked about, Danny, about uh, Titanfall you mentioned briefly. Obviously that's a competitive multiplayer stand-up mm. but we also had Call of Duty Advanced Warfare this yeah. year doing a lot of cool stuff with mobility in their competitive multiplayer mm. suite. Uh, and Kevin uh, looks single like, player. I was yeah. just, I mean, but talk about single player. Wolfenstein. Yeah. yeah. You know, is Who it, would have is thought it, that that game would be as good as it was? And you know what? I have tons of people in my Twitter feed 
clearly trying to tell me that Wolfenstein is the best shooter of 2014. That's, and you know, they might be right. Yeah, that's not a bad shout. Yeah, I, um, yeah. it's, it's right. One of the games that I actually thought was one of the best shooters of the year uh, was Grand Theft Auto V, weirdly enough. Who saw that one coming? First person. Yeah. Um, but yeah, of course, you know, we've talked a lot about big games here. The small games, of course, are, are eligible as well. Games like, for instance, my we're, we're all talking about our sort of personal top fives. I know I've definitely got uh, Transistor in there, um, mm -hmm. as well as Cannon Brawl, which is a great um, PC game that came out earlier this year as, earlier this year as well. Yeah. But one of the games that a lot of the office has been playing is uh, Hearthstone. Oh yeah, tons of Hearthstone players. And I think the biggest argument uh, when we talked about Hearthstone in terms of its nomination was, where do we play it more, on the PC or on mobile? Yeah, right. you know? yeah. And it ended up making the nominee list for both because the voices were so loud in favor of that game because it's so clever, it's so engrossing, and it's just there's the, the strategy ceiling on it is so high, you can be into this game for hours and hours and hours. Yeah, uh, Some fantastic games there. Is there anything else uh, that's uh, peeking out of you guys we haven't mentioned in this uh, discussion? A, a, a shout-out, I think, to Telltale. Of course, um, so many games this because year. Because not only is The Wolf Among Us on my personal, like it's one of my personal top ten it's, games it's, of the it's year. It's in our nominee for best mobile as well. Yeah, and, but we've also had great things like uh, Tales from the Borderlands. Who would have so thought yeah. that mm -hmm. the best Borderlands game would be the one that Telltale <laughs> made? Right. Um, or, and the Game of Thrones uh, first episode just and, came out. And of just, course, Walking Dead boy. Season 2 has been oh, clipping God, along this yes. year as well. Yeah. Like Telltale, you just you do what you do. You keep doing it because we're eating it up. Yeah, we have uh, the reason why we didn't put up the video of all the nominees or the reason why we're not talking about them all here today is because there are simply too many of them. Uh, 2014 has been a great year for video games and we are very close to announcing GameSpot's Game of the Year for this year. In fact, it'll be next Thursday, December 18th, live, 2 p.m. Pacific, right here in the lobby where we'll be unveiling, con con conversing, first of all, about the possible winners we think should have won. Uh, and then unveiling GameSpot's Game of the Year 2014. So make sure you put that on your calendar. 2 p.m. Pacific, right here on GameSpot.com, next Thursday, December 18th. We'll see you there.